Hello. Welcome to the Sounds of Stowe Spring Concert. We're so happy to have all of you join us today um, for an afternoon of joyful music by Mozart and Haydn. In addition to playing in the orchestra for over 25 years, I am the current president of the Sounds of Stowe board. And I'd like to take just a moment to let you know some of what we've been doing this year and give you a sneak peek at our plans for next year. I would say that this season has allowed us to stretch our wings a little bit. Our November concert, which we presented in Littleton this year, featured local pianist Sonia ovrutsky fensum who is originally from Ukraine. And with her encouragement, our faithful audience and supporters raised over $6,000 for World Central Kitchen's food relief in the hardest hit areas. A round of applause for all of us. We are really, really very proud of that, and it's something that we're just so grateful to everyone for contributing to. Today, of course, we're back here in Stowe to celebrate the beginning of spring, and in just a few weeks, on May 20th, the chorus will be performing in an inaugural season concert with the Vista Philharmonic and several other local choruses in the incredible new concert hall at Groton Hill Music in Groton. You can find details on our website and purchase tickets on the Groton Hill Music website. If you haven't been there, it's absolutely phenomenal and the chorus is so excited and feels lucky to be included. Speaking of spring and wings, perhaps birds come to mind? They should. We are thrilled to announce that our fall concert will have a bird theme, featuring some of our incredible orchestra members as soloists um, and including favorites such as Sanson's The Swan, Ralph Vaughan Williams' The Lark Ascending, and the New England premiere of Christopher Tin's The Lost Bird, Birds, which is described as a musical memorial to bird species driven to extinction by humankind. It received a, nomi a Grammy nomination in 2023. Barbara heard one of its presentations in California, and we are thrilled to be able to present the New England premiere. That will be in November. And in keeping with our long history of thoughtful programming that pairs old and new, our spring 2024 concert will focus on works that evoke the animal kingdom. We are really excited to announce that we have commissioned Keen Southard, an up and coming composer with local roots and a former piano student of Barbara's to write a requiem for animals for us. Why a requiem? Because, like Christopher Tin, Keen Southern is acutely aware of the precarious balance and imbalance between humans and animals, and the concept and structure of a requiem allows the composer to tackle the complexities of the theme in varied ways, contemplative, critical, and choral. But as Barbara reminded me, historically, composers wrote requiems because honestly, they paid the bills. Since we're commissioning this work, we invite all of you to help us fund it by contributing on our website or in the donation jar in the lobby. And as always, every little bit helps, so thank you. Finally, I'd like to take a moment to introduce you to the Mozart Sinfonia Concertante for Winds. It was written for four virtuoso friends that Mozart had met in Mannheim and who were scheduled to perform the work in Paris in 1778. The story, is that the director of that performance had kept a copy of the original score so that he could copy it and then replace the piece on the program, the work was never performed, and the score was lost. A version emerged in the late 1860s, and though it's been debated, the work has ultimately been accepted as Mozart. But all that aside, 
What really stands out about this piece, and what I would encourage all of you to listen for, can be summed up in just one word. Fun. Listen to how Mozart challenges the soloists. These are truly written for virtuoso players, and we are so lucky that our very own Sounds of Stowe players are up to that challenge. The third movement, in particular, takes a simple theme and has 10 variations for you to listen to, each of which ends with a repeated chorus, and even that pokes some fun at itself. So see if you can hear the laughing. And now is the part where I remind you all to silence your electronic devices, Please patronize our sponsors and applaud loudly at the end of each piece in appreciation of our chorus, orchestra, soloists, volunteers, Stowe TV, and of course, our artistic director, Barbara Jones. Thank you all for being here and for your ongoing support of the Sounds of Stowe Chorus and Orchestra. Enjoy the concert.
Um, I just wanted to say a couple words about the Haydn before we present this to you. Haydn had to have been one of the most optimistic com of all composers. And he had many reasons to be so, I think. Um, one is he had an unwavering faith 
He had a long and healthy life. He was comfortable in his life. He was recognized, he was admired, and he was paid. So he had it cushy compared to a lot of composers who struggle for all of those things. And this is the last work that he composed. He wrote six masses, and this is the most complex, the largest, and I think the greatest. And uh, although there's no, there's no point in looking for superlatives, it's just a wonderful work. Haydn can visit the dark side, but he never stays there. He always moves on. And um, s uh, Miriam touched a little bit on this, uh, why, why we sing so many masses and requiems. And it is because they paid the bills. Um, and when you have a form, like a mass, that is a predictable, it's a liturgical uh, uh, process that you follow, it can become cliché in, in, in a less imaginative composer's hands. But Haydn, throughout this piece, uh, surprises us all the time. For example, when the text is, et resurrexit, going to rise from the dead. Usually that's a great big major chord and everything. Here, it's full of excitement and energy, but it's minor. I mean, that's odd, uh, but you still very much get the message. Or the sanctus in many settings is big and grand. You can imagine a huge cathedral and cardinals walking down and stuff. Here, it's the most intimate movement of the whole piece. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's very interesting to hear it it taken that different in a different way. Um, the Benedictus is blessed is the man who comes, and usually that's treated in kind of a reverential way. Here, it's excitement. It's like five-year-old excitement. Can't wait to see him, and uh, so it's a, it's very different. And the final movement, which is Dona Nobis Pacem, in November we looked at four different settings of that same text. Give us peace, and uh, we had the confidence of Bach, and we had the uncertainty of Schubert, and we had the ominous rumblings in Beethoven. But Haydn, it's bring it on. Let's have a great time. And so um, he just wholeheartedly embraces the concept. Um, so we would like to transport you into his world where you just can't come away from it without feeling that everything is going to be just fine. And in order to help you follow what's going on, because I'm going to assume you didn't sharpen up on your Latin before you came. We're going to have the soloist just hit some of the highlights that you will be hearing during the movements, because it is a, it's a narrative, it's a story. And uh, so one of them will give the English translation, and one will just give you a couple key Latin words that you can recognize what they mean. So I hope you enjoy this most joyful work. Christ, have mercy. Christe eleison. Lord, have mercy. Kyrie eleison.
glory be to God in the highest. Gloria in excelsis Deo. And on earth peace to all. We praise you. Laudamus te. And bless you. Benedicimus te. We give thanks to you. Gracias. You take away the sins of the world. Critolis peccata mundi. Have mercy on us. Miserere nobis. You alone are holy. Quoniam tu solus sanctus. Together with the Holy Spirit. Cum sancto spiritu. In the glory of God the Father. In gloria Dei Patris. Amen.
I believe in one God. Credo in unum Deum. God of God. Deum de Deo. Light of light. Lumen de Lumine. Who descended from heaven. Descendit de Celis. Who was born. Incarnatus est. From Mary. Ex Maria. And was made man. Et homo factus est. He was crucified for us. Crucifixus pro nobis. And was buried. Sepultus est. He rose on the third day. Resurrexit tertia die. And ascended to heaven. Et ascendit in celum. He shall come again to judge the living and the dead. Judicare vivos et mortuos. I await the resurrection of the dead and eternal life. Vitam venturi. Amen.
Give us peace. Dona nobis pace. 